It is just a dynamical system. It's just something that is determined by the rules of the system and it will always do exactly what it was going to do. There's no, there's no randomness in it really because as long as you know what the initial state is, you can say exactly what's going to happen. Uh, but it always kind of attracts to this thing. And it's not even proved that that will always happen. Like no one's found a configuration that doesn't uh, go to this, this attractor of this weird kind of diagonal thing. But it just happens. Uh, there's a guy called Chris Langton. Uh, he's a, uh, what's it? Artificial life. He's one of the one of the guys that came up with the concept of artificial life and started that as a science. So as opposed to artificial intelligence, you're not looking at computers that can think or software that can think and talk to you, but you're looking at things that will model the way that life behaves. And it's it's a, a huge field now. It's a really interesting field. They do it with with software and with hardware, and I think sometimes also with like biological organisms. They try and model kind of larger, more complex life. Uh, but this is a nice little example of something which has behaviours uh, and that you, you might try and study these behaviours. Because you can, you can start with any grid you want, so you can almost program it like a computer because you know that it will do uh, you know, whatever it was going to do given the particular starting configuration. And uh, I think it was about 2000, someone discovered that you can actually use this to run any computer program. So you can build kind of computer logic gates and, and that kind of thing within this system and it is a universal Turing machine. Uh, which is quite a nice uh, fact about this, even though it is just a little ant wandering around. How can this be used in a computery way if it's always got this inevitable jam point, it seems like? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I guess I'd, I would need to study it in more depth to find out, but you can kind of uh, do computations using it, and I guess you would maybe stop before it gets to to that point and you would have the answer to your computation. But as, like, as long as it does that in a finite number of steps, then you can you can use it as a Turing machine. Obviously Conway's got his game of life and Langton's got his ant. Do people just sit there making up arbitrary rules and then just release them into the wild and see what happens? I suspect that people do actually. Uh, and I think what you find is that in general, the majority of kind of setups that you can choose or come up with are rubbish. Like they're mostly just boring or nothing ever works. So like when Conway came up with a game of life, he spent a lot of time tuning it to kind of get the balance between something that would always just die quite quickly and something that would suddenly become, you know, unbelievable, like complex. Like he got something that just worked nicely and, and you know, behaved in a certain way. And I think that was a lot of trying different combinations of like how many cells and what, you know, what the rules are. And I think certain sets of rules will give you an interesting answer, but certain sets of rules are just rubbish. So a lot of people have been looking into them, but most of them have just sort of died a death because they're not interesting. The total weight stays the same. In fact, in the very beginning, what is our initial weight? So we have, one 